Hey guys, uh, my name is Brandon Rice and I'm the health coach here at Partner MD located at the Short Pump location. And today I wanted to talk to you about the in body scan. So, uh, as health coaches, we have access to a body composition analyzer called a in uh, body. And this in body uses bioelectrical impedances to be able to measure your muscle mass, your fat mass, and give you a better understanding of the body composition. Um, so, are you gaining muscle, losing fat? Uh, understanding where those numbers are coming from on the scale. Uh, and today I want to go through the entire sheet uh, from top to bottom. So when you come in and have a conversation with a health coach, you have a better understanding of uh, how to really process these things and then go home and make sure that you're doing what you're doing in order to see improvements over time. Um, so starting from the top, this is the in body. Uh, initially, I want to go over the total body water, the dry lean mass, and body fat mass. Um, so the machine is primarily going to measure total body water. Uh, reason being, fat doesn't absorb water like muscle does, and so the higher amount of water that you have, that is typically indicated on the machine by a higher amount of skeletal muscle mass, uh, which just goes to show you how important drinking your water is. Um, but that's going to give you your values of a quantitative amount of how much muscle versus how much fat you have on your body. Um, so it's going to take your body fat, your lean mass, and your total body water, add all that up, and that should be your total weight. Uh, the next thing is the body composition analysis. So understanding uh, how you compare to the rest of your demographic. Uh, for example, this is a six foot tall, 33 year old male. Um, getting an understanding of where you fall in relation to the rest of your demographic. So there are three different categories on this chart. There's an under, a normal, and an over, right? So if this bar is coming from left to right and it only stops in this column, you would be considered under compared to the rest of your demographic. Anything that falls in the middle is going to be considered normal, and anything to the right of that is going to be considered over. Uh, so as an example, this is what we're um, referring to as a D-shaped distribution, where the top and bottom, your weight and your body fat mass, are less than the amount of skeletal muscle mass according to the rest of your demographic. Um, there are three different types of distributions. There is a C-shaped which is top and bottom are slightly greater in comparison to that middle number, an I-shaped, which all three of those are going to line up, and then a D-shaped, which ultimately uh, is what we consider the stronger type of body, uh, which is going to be the skeletal muscle mass being greater than your weight or your body fat mass. So um, if you come in and you have a conversation with your health coach and you want to be able to see your body composition change by increasing skeletal muscle mass, well, then you want to go home, you want to eat protein, you want to do some resistance training, make sure that you can see improvements in that over time. Body fat mass is going to be mainly increasing your metabolic rate through cardio and then ensuring that you're eating less carbs in order to decrease the amount of body fat overall. Um, so it is a great opportunity for you to get an understanding of your body composition and how your weight is fluctuating as you continue uh, to make those better choices on a daily basis. Uh, the obesity analysis is going to be the next box that's going to cover BMI and percentage of body fat. Um, so BMI, anything between 20 and 25 is considered normal. 25 to 30 is considered overweight. Anything over 30 is considered obese. Uh, and then percentage of body fat, uh, I have found through my examples that most women typically fall between 30 and 35 percent and most men typically fall between 20 and 25 percent. Um, but making sure that you understand what those numbers are. You can then come back. I usually recommend every four to six weeks being able to utilize the body composition to make sure that you can um, see consistent change over time. You don't necessarily need to do it week to week because you're not going to see a whole lot of difference. Um, but that being said, I think it's a good chance for you to understand progression. The segmental lean analysis at the bottom of the page is going to give you a better understanding of how your lean mass, your skeletal muscle mass, is on your body. So uh, the M body compares the right arm versus the left arm and the right leg versus the left leg. 
Um, in my experience, I have found that anything greater than a pound of difference between one side versus the other typically indicates a previous injury. Uh, so if you are doing any sort of exercising, ensuring that you're doing more single arm or single leg exercises in order to try to balance those things out in comparison to just doing squats or push-ups uh, if you have a similar amount of muscle mass on one side versus the other. Um, the second to last thing we're going to go over is the body fat and lean body mass uh, calculator. So it's almost like a roadmap to be able to say if my lines up at the very top, if I wanted to have everything fall within that normal range, in body is estimating you lose a certain amount of body fat or gain a certain amount of muscle or a little bit of both, and then that way you can have something to kind of gear your successes and uh, ultimately your goal number uh, to be able to figure out what that number should be for you. The last thing we're going to go over is the basal metabolic rate. So that's the thing at the very bottom. What that is, is basically if you sat on a couch and did nothing for 24 hours but breathe, your body would burn X amount of calories. Um, so for example, this individual has 1965. Um, so that being said, if that person were to eat more than 1965 calories on a consistent basis, they would potentially gain weight over time. If they would eat less than that number and not do any exercise, then they would consistently lose weight over time. Um, if you do exercise, that increases that number. And so if you burn 400 calories while you're on the Peloton, um, you can then create a deficit of 400 calories, which would only uh, accelerate your weight loss goal. Um, so I think this is a great tool to be able to understand uh, your exercise regimen and whether you want to be able to gain muscle or lose body fat. Uh, also from a nutrition perspective, just to be able to um, not just rely on the scale. I think, it's, I think it's a great opportunity for you to become more aware of your body composition and to learn how in order to sustain this over a long period of time.